So you want to find the top five best ways to identify whether the crowd is leaning bullish or bearish, as well as finding which coins out there are seeing the most bullish or bearish narratives at any given moment. And we've got some solid examples that I use all the time for my analysis here at Santiment. And I think that uh, you can either go with a similar approach to me or, of course, innovate, improve upon the ways that I'm doing. And if so, of course, I'm very curious as to how you come up with better ways to do this. Uh, that's what Santiment's all about. We're a very communal group of traders and investors and staff members that are trying to constantly break the narrative and find the best ways to use these types of tools. And obviously, on-chain data is a big part of our platform, as is development activity. But I think the heart and soul for a lot of people when they look at sentiment is our sentiment metrics. So that's what we're going to look at today. And I've pulled up a quick template on the screener tab that simply is sorted using this active column tab. All I did was kind of reorganize it, add in this weighted sentiment column by putting it in the search prompt here. And then I put it at the far left so that it's easy to see and right next to the coin. And I sorted by the most negative weighted sentiment at any given time. And this is using right now every single coin that's on sentiment. If I go to the filter, you'll see it's about 3,469 different assets. And what do you know? Bitcoin is actually seeing some of the most bearish sentiment at this moment, which is very interesting. You'll see a few other notables like Solana and Binance Coin. Typically, the reason you see such large cap assets like the first, seventh, fifth, and fourth, and even the 25th largest market cap when looking at a size sample of over 3,400 is because there's simply more volume that allows things to be pushed toward extremes, if that makes sense. So uh, if you look at the 3,000th market cap asset, they're barely getting mentions on a day-to-day -day basis. So the expected average of their bullish versus bearish sentiment, it's basically either, is it even being mentioned at all or not? And when it is, it's not enough to skew toward like negative 0.5 or plus 0.5, but that's just kind of like getting in the weeds of the math on this. Um, but I've seen Bitcoin here for a few days right now. And even though we see, you know, maybe on a one or two hour basis, a big bullish sentiment spike, if, you know, for example, the price goes above 67K like it did earlier on Tuesday, we may not see that for the full day. And usually over the full day as of late, there's a little more bearishness, uh, which is surprising because Bitcoin's been on a bit of a a climb over the past five to six weeks. But anyways, you can see plenty of familiar faces like Bitcoin, Solana, Binance Coin, Pepe, but also a lot that you probably aren't ever really paying attention to, like Chardex, um, Harry Potter, Potter, Obama, Sonic, Ten Inu, one of the uh, infamous meme coins out there that I'm sure a few of you are paying close attention to. Multiverse, Sleepless AI, X, Sharpe, and you just can go down and down. And obviously you can go through every single page if you really wanted to. This is just page one of 139 by looking at 25 rows at a time. I could switch that to 50 rows or 10 rows as needed. You get the idea. I can also, of course, sort by most bullish. And all of a sudden we're seeing the assets that are getting the most bullish hype like Ambire Wallet, Bad Idea AI, Float Protocol, Go Network. Not too many familiar faces on the bullish end at the moment, which is interesting. Sats is the only notable one that's even inside the top 120 or so in market cap. So this is a template that I, I use when I'm often just trying to find the most extreme outliers in terms of the crowd's bullishness or the crowd's bearishness on a daily basis. Moving on. Next up, we can check out this template I made that is very simple. It's simply dividing the amount of positive sentiment comments versus negative sentiment comments across social media. Unlike weighted sentiment, this is just cutting out social volume. Uh, for those who don't know how weighted sentiment is calculated, we just look at the amount of mentions multiplied by this exact ratio, which is 
positive sentiment versus ne uh, divided by negative sentiment. You can see how I calculated it. Very simple. You just type in the search metrics here in the combine metric prompt, title it however you want, and then just say X1, which in this case is positive, divided by X2, which is negative, hit save, and it'll pop right up. So on this template, um, for convenience, I've got arguably the three most popular assets, excluding Tether and Binance Coin, which are actually larger market caps than Solana. But basically just looking at three very top, top, top caps to see what their positive versus negative sentiment is. And generally speaking, when you see a lot of positivity, uh, markets are more likely to correct. Negativity, markets are more likely to bounce. Pretty straightforward. And if you want to use this template, which is in the description of this video, you can, of course, change the main asset. You could even hide the other two if you'd like and just focus on Bitcoin and say you don't want to look at Bitcoin and want to look at something like optimism. It instantly changes over along with the price so you can see the patterns going on for any asset out there. And keep in mind, these sentiment metrics aren't just for Ethereum based assets. It's for all of them. Uh, every single asset that's on sentiment, you have sentiment data at your disposal, which is really cool. So uh, there's a, a pretty wide variety of different rabbit holes you can go down with uh, metrics like this or similar to this. Next up, this is kind of a repeat of the first tab we looked at, but on Sandbase, the chart section instead, where we're simply looking at the weighted sentiment. See Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. And these are very, very long-term the way I set it up. You can change it if you want, but the template that's in the description of this video is looking at seven day changes for each of these. So you can see when one might dip, like you saw with Bitcoin right here, big negative sentiment and price moved higher afterwards. And then it got a little more positive and price dipped. So that's quite interesting. Next up, now we move to the social trends tab, which is always going to be at the top of your screen, fourth one over. And here is one of my new favorite charts. Shout out to a few of the staff members at Santiment who were um, really investigating this a lot uh, in the last couple of months and found great ways to find tops and bottoms based on what the crowd is leaning toward at any given time. And uh, as of right now, since we've been in the 60Ks for a bit, the bottom signals often come when we see mentions of round numbers anywhere between 50K to 59K across social media because this is a sign of fear or uh, expectations of prices moving down from where they are now. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got 70K to 79K. We haven't even been beyond 74K yet, but people still mention all of these round numbers, especially when they get hyped or excited or euphoric about the way prices are moving. And then suddenly we have some top signals form. So this is a great indication as well. I use it a lot uh, and we posted about it actually earlier today. So you might see on our X feed or here on insights.sentiment.net, a little post about some of the major outliers between the lows and the highs that the social crowd is mentioning and how that often ends up being a perfect signal for a top like it was right here or a bottom like it was right here. Um, and this works for any prices, by the way. So if let's say we're in the 90Ks uh, and you're watching this a year or two from now, um, you can easily just change these numbers to, you know, 80 to 89K for the low and 100K to 110K for the high. Just go like 10% or 15% above whatever the current price is. And you found your easy fear numbers and your greed numbers. And like we mentioned, the crowd often gets it wrong. Most of the time they're getting it wrong uh, and the prices are moving the opposite direction of their expectations at any given time. So really great counter signal. The proof is in the pudding here. You see the biggest fear spikes on this chart are literally the bottoms, the perfect times to buy. Even this latest one that just happened five days ago from the time of this recording, perfect bottom signal. And now we see a arguably a pretty decent top signal. I'm not quite convinced this is a huge spike, but it's big enough where we've already seen that the price settled down shortly after the spike happened. So we'll see how the next few days go. 
And then last but not least, this is one of my OG metrics I've been using for a few years. We're looking at a similar uh, approach to what we checked out here. And it's just the buy buying bot bottom bottomed or bullish, just coincidentally, I'll start with a B. Um, these are basically the uh, indicators that people are getting greedy and then sell, selling, sold, top, topped, or bearish, these are the signs that people are getting fearful, right? Because they're obviously going to spam things like I'm selling or I just sold when they're a little more worried that the price is going to go down soon. So you can see here, clearly, uh, the sell spikes are huge uh, during the crash on August 4th and 5th. Even right here, you can see reds really exceeding the blues on September 16th. And then look at how the um, buy mentions are very high on October 5th, and we get a, a top shortly after. I don't think that was the best signal. There's better examples over the course of Bitcoin's history, um, but this is just the past three months. And you can always get a better, sharper idea by using a shared axis. There's always going to be more people uh, mentioning buying and being bullish because that's just the nature of crypto. People naturally get a bit hyped by default. Um, and there's still some great times where you can find good bottom or top signals using this approach as well. So let me know what you think, guys. These are my top five, as of now, best ways to find which way the markets slash the crowd are leaning at any given time. Looking forward to your comments. Talk to you soon.